Hey everyone, this is Lucky70x. Welcome back to Let's Play Mario and Luigi Dream Team. In the last episode, we uh, took on the Battle Ring, we took on Antasma X, I believe, and then I had a stream uh, about a week ago of when this video is going to be going up. I had a, a stream where I did the grinding for this uh, game we call Dream Team, and I accidentally went through a pipe. And uh, I also got myself to level 39. And, uh, well, mostly all the way to, like, 40. We're basically one battle away. It's about 800-ish experience to 1,000 experience for, uh, per battle in Dreamy Neo Bowser Castles. So, should take us about one level to get to Mario, and then one or two levels to get Luigi up to, uh, or, uh, two, th two or three battles total to get Luigi up to level 40. So, in this episode, we're gonna hit level 40. Level 40 is special because level 40 is Rainbow Rank, which is a really big deal and probably necessary for the battle ring. Not only do you get uh, rank up bonuses that actually will do something, it won't be just be gear slots and badge stocks finally, we're actually going to get real, like, actual perks and get to choose some of the really meaty good stuff. Um, you also get access to the store in Driftwood, which is really important because it has a very important uh, thing that I need to get for my build. Speaking of builds, during the stream, um, the, the, only really, the only real highlight of the stream, I haven't uploaded this stream yet, I could still, honestly... Nothing exciting happens besides the highlight I showed with, with the farmer boots. That's pretty much the only exciting thing that really happened during the stream. Uh, the farmer boots, by the way, in case I haven't mentioned, they makes enemies drop beans instead of coins on occasion. We're talking if you go into, say, the dream world and do a giant group battle, which is pretty much everything in Neo Bowser Castle, you'll get maybe somewhere between three to six beans-ish per battle on average. So... Basically, like, that doesn't seem like much, but it adds up really quickly. And just from one level of grind, just from getting to thir from mostly through 30, level 39, I got this many beans. Well, I had some of the bro beans already, but I got this many beans. It's kind of ridiculous. This is, like, almost, like, three levels-ish worth of stats right there, just to put it in perspective. Maybe more like two. But still, that's, like, a lot of extra stats right there. So it's actually a really big deal. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to get to level 40, and then, uh... I actually did a lot of this stream. We're going to level 40. I'm going to show off the shop. I'm going to show off all the rank up bonuses. And then, if there's time, we're going to do Palladium X. I'm going to try to make time. I'm going to probably make the video long just to make sure that happens. Because I think uh, Palladium X shouldn't be too hard. I actually managed to do it on stream. Just for funsies. Because I was like, I'll practice Palladium X before we end the stream. And then I actually kind of beat it on a different file. Because I split this into two files. So on and so forth. And also, we're going to address the elephant in the room very shortly, and one of the reasons why I kind of delayed making this video for a little bit, and then weird real-life stuff happened. Nothing to worry about, just... It's been a very bizarre week, I guess. Uh, okay, well, that's on the low end. Usually you get more beans than that. That's actually pretty low, unfortunately, but, uh... Sometimes you get low rolls. That's how random stats can be sometimes. Okay, the Lackadoos are actually about a thousand experience, so they're actually pretty nice. And there you have it! Level 40 for me! Rainbow Rank achieved. So we'll talk about Paper Jam, though. Paper Jam came out recently. I want to take a, a couple days to actually get into Paper Jam and really have actual significant opinions to talk about during this video. So that's another reason for the delay. It was like suddenly, oh, Paper Jam suddenly came out. I completely forgot about that. So on and so forth. Before we get to Paper Jam, though, let's talk about Rainbow Rank. At Rainbow Rank, you see the plus one under the rainbow. You actually get two new perks. And now we can actually pick the perks, like I said. So let's go through this. Obviously, these ones are all useless because these involve levels, as does uh, the one over here of Shroom EXP, uh, which uh, involves levels. Obviously, me having already done the grind, these level-related ones, such as extra stats or just faster levels, are completely pointless to me. I'm already the level I need to be. And frankly, I don't give them much stock anyway because, for example, the beans, you can pretty much get this anyway without having to waste a, rank, a precious like rank up slot. And for grinding, you can just grind. Just fight 20% more battles. Something that... It, I, wa I want perks that mean more than just a time saver. And that's all these perks are. Oh, your body! Obviously, extremely good. It reduces the damage you receive by, from enemies by 25%. That could be the difference between getting one shot without the guard shell and not getting one shot because enemies hurt in hard mode battle ring. So Iron Body is a pretty big deal. In fact, uh, I, is this okay? No! Is this okay? Yes. In fact, I'm going to be getting Iron Body as uh, one of the perks for sure for Mario because Mario has the duplex crown. He can't wear the guard shell. Giving him Iron Body is very nice. Jumpman and Hammerhead. 
boost solo jump and solo hammer specifically. Keyword solo, it does not affect your bro attacks at all as far as I'm aware. As such, you don't tend to use solo attacks very much. I have, both my bros are going to have infinite BP strategies, Mario being the master glove, so I get infinite BP anytime I get an excellent. And Luigi will actually have an even better infinite BP strategy, which we're going to go over once we have access to the shop in Driftwood Shore. So, because we're not, there's only going to be a couple of very rare cases where solo jumps will be necessary for the end game, namely the Antasma, and she's an Antasma X, for example. Those, having one of these would be helpful, but not worth it, so no. Counter is definitely a very decent idea. Counter will do, you know, counter attacks are a significant portion of your damage, so boosting it by 50% is actually pretty nice. So, uh, you know, it, it's a significant power increase. It's definitely worth considering. Arguably better than the one I'm going to pick, but debatably. So, I, it's, it's, it's an option. It's a realistic option. I would not fault you guys for picking this over the one I am going to pick instead. Went over this one already. This is the one I am gonna pick. Big Lucky. Okay. First of all, let's just let's just you know, it, it's my name. It's Big Lucky. Come on. It's it's kind of destiny for me to pick this one. But also, it boosts your lucky hits by 200%. Normally, it's a 150% bonus damage. This now makes it 200%. So it actually is a fairly significant damage increase, especially if you look at some of these bro attacks that do one hit, like the uh, jet board hammer. What what what's, what's, what? I forget that what that's called. I, it's completely black out on me. This is what happens when I play a Mario and Luigi game. I forget everything about the previous one, even if I'm, I'm LP in that game. But uh, the Jetboard Bash, there we go. I think that's what it's called. You know, get a lucky hit on that. That's a whole lot of extra damage. Same with Luigi's Sling Sniper. Two of the attacks are probably going to be using the most. So, or just the hammer attack. The Luigi Hammer is one big hit. So, big lucky ends up being a really big damage increase, in my opinion. Pretty awesome. Casual Bros is also another consideration, obviously not for Mario, because I have the Master Gloves, so if I have the Master Gloves, it's kind of pointless, because I'm already getting all my BP back if I get an excellent. If I don't get an excellent, I'm doing really poorly. So, uh, really, as long as I get good, this is pretty much useless on Mario, and it's going to be useless on Luigi if I go with the, a build that I'm talking about. There is a merit to giving this to Luigi, though. I'll discuss this when we level up Luigi. Quick Healer is nice. But just not good enough compared to the other things. I mean, yeah, you do extra healing, but you see me. I don't use that many items to begin with. So, without further ado, now that we've gone over the pros and cons, in my opinion, of all those, Big Lucky is my choice, and we're going to go with that. So, uh, that is the game plan, and we give Mario his hopefully final stat up. I don't think I need to get any stronger than this. Uh, based on my performance during a Plodium X during the stream, I'm fairly sure I'm, I'm powerful enough now to handle the entirety of Endgame. So, uh, there is merit to give Mar Mar giving Mario a BP, actually, now, because Mario actually has, um, because I can miss the occasional excellent, so it might not actually be a terrible idea to give Mario a BP, but because we got big luck, I'm going to give him a little bit of extra stash. There we go. Boost in the little bro's stash, because, frankly, it's pretty mediocre still, so we really should do something about that. Whoa, I am going all sorts of fast now. So, well, now we're, I actually kill the enemies in this area, so I do have to quickly head to a different area. Normally, I would cut here, but I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about Paper Jam, because I feel like you guys want my opinion on Paper Jam in a video. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe those of you watching the distant future are like Paper Jam's old news. Now we're talking about Mario and Luigi. The Wario Bros enter the mix. Mario's the seventh in the Mario and Luigi series. Six was Baby Bowser Goes to Prison. That's the first name that came to my head. Don't. Don't question it. Anyway, uh, Paper Jam came out, though. Although, whether I consider it a mainstream Mario Luigi game is up to debate, because Paper Jam is interesting. First of all, it had a really short development time, and it is obvious in a few ways that it had a short development time. It copies a lot from Dream Team. The animations, the graphic style, a lot of uh, the models and everything are taken from Dream Team. And they have very similar systems. They have their expert challenges. They have a lot of these same sorts of things in place. Although Bowser Inside Story and Dream Team kind of had that, although, like I said, that's kind of one of the flaws I thought of Dream Team is it was too similar to Bowser's Inside Story. And Paper Jam kind of does that ten times worse with uh, copying Dream Team, which is a little unfortunate, but I think it's the short development time. The game really needed another year of development time, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong. I think it's good. I think it's better than Dream Team. LP in this game has kind of made me sort of change my mind on Dream Team a little bit. It's uh, one of two projects, actually, that I've ever done that lowered my opinion of the game by the time I was done. The first being Spirit Tracks, because that game kind of dragged on for a bit, and I kind of 
really wasn't having as much fun as I thought it would because of how much it dragged on. And this was a very similar situation. This game drags on a lot. You have the really tedious expert challenges, you have the really, you have all the mini games. you have, you know, just all the pillows they have to go into the Dream World Clay. It just breaks up the action so much, it ends up being super slow paced because of it. Paper Jam, super fast paced, that makes that game like five times more lp -able because this LP dragged on a lot and it definitely strained me a bit. Paper Jam is totally a lot, gonna be a lot easier to Let's Play. I will say that much right now, it would definitely be a, uh, it's definitely more likely that I'm going to Let's Play that game, just because it's a much more fast-paced game, and it's nice for that. And the paper mechanics are fun! Paper Mario Combat is awesome, his skills are awesome, just everything about him is awesome, Paper Craft is awesome. I love Paper Mario, it's fantastic. I forgot to show something off really cool, actually, and I'm gonna try to do that in the next battle. You can actually, uh, if you want to really farm beans, you can run away after doing a, after doing a, after doing a, after hitting them and collecting the beans, you still collect the beans. So if we like look at our bean counter right now, you know, just for posterity's sake, you have, you know, we have like, you know, all of these beans. I have nine power beans, eight eights, all these things over here. Um, so on and so forth. If we actually kill these guys, but don't kill all of them, we can actually collect the beans, run away, and then do it again for infinite bean farming. So that's a thing. Anyway, Paper Jam, like I said, so the good is, you know, the, the battles are fun, the game, they definitely put a lot of passion into the actual gameplay, the actual gameplay is pretty solid, and they brought a lot of the good from Paper Mario, it's quirky, it's fun, it's lighthearted. it's definitely, you know, it's a fun game, I still am enjoying myself, however, however, it has a little bit of Sticker Star Syndrome, and I say that not in a gameplay perspective, I said in everything else that was wrong with Sticker Star, because Sticker Star had a lot of problems, gameplay was a major problem, Gameplay is not a problem with Paper Jam. Do not when I say Sticker Star Syndrome, I'm not referring to the fact that you know I'm not referring to gameplay at all. The gameplay of Dream Team is fan of Paper Jam is fantastic, and I love it so much so far. However, a lot of the other things that are on Paper of Sticker Star, namely the environment being really bland, the story being very generic, the lack of any unique characters. They only were allowed to use Goomba. I think whoever. Put that restriction on the Sticker Star team, put this, that restriction on the Paper Jam team, unfortunately. Whether it be developmental time, or there was rumors that Miyamoto was the one who made uh, Sticker Star only have generic Mario enemies, for example. I think that happened again here, or something like that, because there's not really any new characters or anything quirky. It's just Toads and generic enemies again, which is unfortunate, because that takes out so much of the Mario Luigi. I meant to switch to healing. I guess it doesn't really matter, but uh, I guess I didn't save it. Anyway. It takes out so much of the spark when you only have generic Mario enemies and you only have, you know, generic Mario characters and the plot is extremely bare bones. It's actually kind of disappointingly brief in how everything gets set up and just the way it all works. It's actually kind of unfortunate. By the way, I haven't really mentioned this. That's a much better bean haul. I can't even get two of those power beans though because I'm full on power beans. I was really hoping that wouldn't happen and it did. Uh. No! Get out of here, I want to show off something. So that's my complaint with that game, it is very simplistic. There's a lot of steps forward, the expert challenges for example are a lot easier and far less tedious this time. Just for, so for demonstration purposes, since I wanted to show off the farmer boots a bit. Uh, as you can see, we did indeed keep those beans, 9, 9, 10 here. So it does actually happen, just in case here for Mario to take a couple power beans. Um, it's really unfortunate I just wasted two power beans, but whatever. I'm not gonna really farm beans. I'm already pretty strong, and it's just gonna make me more broken. If only if I need to, only if I do the battle ring in, in practice and decide, oh, I really need more power, I will farm. It's a very similar manner to this. And in case you're wondering why I'm only using the uh, Luigi Ball, because they are boots, you actually should be using a boot-based attack. Uh, you can see how much that lucky hit did, by the way. Really significant damage from that lucky hit. Um. Anyway, I pretty much one shot the guy, so lucky hits now do so much damage. Anyway, uh, you need to use boot-based attacks, and Luigi Night Ball is a boot-based attack, so it will actually trigger the beans. So it's the best way to farm beans is using the Luigi Night Ball. I think, I haven't really confirmed, I mean, I could technically test it right now with the Luigi Night Hammer and find out. You know what? What the heck? Let's, let's, let's do some science, just for funsies. Just to see. Just, just, just because, you know what? Just science, while I talk more about Paper Jam. So yeah. It's the good and the bad. They simplify a lot of things in a lot of ways. It steps forward from the Dream Team formula. It's very similar to, to the Dream Team formula with a lot less, you know, with the expert challenges not being a pain in the ass. There's no Dream World bullshit. It's a lot more fast-paced, so 
yeah, as you can see, none of those were beans. So I'm pretty, I mean, that's not guaranteed, but that makes me very much think you need a boot based attack, which would be Illusionary Ball as your best chance. You know what? I'm just, actually, I don't want to let, let this guy hit me because he does a lot of damage and it hurts. I'm probably going to kill half these guys. Oh well. Uh, but yeah, so Dream Team has a lot of good and it has a lot of. I'm, I'm just murdering everyone. Um, or Paper Jam. It's. I consider it better than Dream Team. I consider it to be worse than the original trilogy, though, because it still has a lot of the flaws that uh, other that 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 other games in the series had. Uh, or that it has a lot of. The, it, what am I talking about? It has a lot of sticker star as flaws. They made a very strange design decision to not have any unique characters or just generic paper and. It's just basically just generic enemies and generic environments. It's like playing a new Super Mario Bros. game, except it's a Mario Luigi game, except without any of the real Mario Luigi characters. It still has the, the dialogue, though. It still has all the conversations and all the awesome charm that comes with that. Don't get me wrong. But, uh... It's kind of missing a bit of that of the spark otherwise, and that's a little unfortunate. So it becomes... It's a little bland tasting, I guess. They made it a little too simple. So... Instead of being like a solid 9 out of 10, I would make it more like a 6, 7 out of 10. Which is why I put Dream Team because of how slow paces. So it's about the same level of Dream Team. If you like Dream Team, you'll probably like, and you don't really care about a super intense plot and characters and stuff like that. If you're, if you're looking more for the Mario and Luigi quirkiness and less, and charm, and less for the RPG part of it. Because it's a much simplified RPG. In fact, they don't even have like the gear, the, 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 the stat roulettes anymore. They took that out for some reason. So lots of little things that are just like, why did you remove that? Why did you simplify this? A little too much. So if you don't, if you don't mind the simplification of it and you just are there for the Mario Luigi quirkiness and fun, you're still gonna have a really good time. It's really quirky and fun, but it's lacking a few things to make it that perfect pinnacle that Bowser's Inside Story was. That's my review. Let's talk about Luigi now because Luigi, I'm gonna give him the same things basically as Mario, but I do want to talk about for a second about uh, the fact about Casual Bros, because Luigi does not have the Master Gloves, we cannot give him the Master Gloves, in fact, we kind of want the Lucky Gloves on him as well, but because we have those Lucky Gloves on him, Big Lucky obviously becomes very important. So the question becomes, what do you put in his, like, chest, the, the, like, the, the, gear, the, the gear that looks like a chest, that slot that we have, because we have the gloves, we have the pants, we have his hammer and boots are irrelevant. What do you put in that? The choice would be Guard Shell DX again. Or an item we're going to get in the Rainbow Shop, which will give basically him infinite BP through a slightly different method that we'll talk about later. If we gave the the, went the, the Guard Shell X route, we we want to get Casual Bows. The negative to that though is that Battle Rings the, the Battle Ring medley that we're gonna have to fight drags on for a while. We're gonna get through those six hits eventually, and then Luigi's still gonna take extra damage because we're, we're not gonna take Iron Body. Obviously, we want Big Lucky because of his stash stat, his Lucky build. It's just so good on him. We want Big Lucky, so that's a given. Casual Bros also won't give him infinite BP. It just has the rate he uses BP. So, in the end, he's still going to run out of BP. So, I don't really like Casual Bros on him. That being said, you do not need four badges in this game. If you're going for a super efficient run, gear slot, gear slot, skip the badge stock on Luigi. Big Lucky, Casual Bros and uh, the uh, Iron Body. Although, even then, Casual Bros still isn't that useful because with the build we're going to have, I'm going to give him Iron Body because I'm going to take off the Guard Shell to put this other item on. It's going to effectively give him bit, uh, infinite BP, so Casual Bros is useless. And you still always have this 25% damage, which is probably just as good as, you know, dodging six hits, technically, maybe, possibly. Especially because this item we're going to get also gets Luigi's HP back. So, it's kind of an interesting choice. In the end, I've decided that Iron Body and Big Lucky are the best things for him for that reason. I kind of wanted to really go over like my reasoning for these decisions because it was a question that I very much deeply debated for a very long time on how I wanted to uh, rank up him up there, and uh, that's kind of the conclusion I came up with. So I hope you find that interesting. Uh, in case you're wondering, just to uh, jump up a step, speed is useless on him, useless, pointless, don't need any BP anymore. And we're just gonna go up the stash then. Booyah! Okay, so that's what we have then. Uh, these are the all the lovely, lovely uh, stats that he has, and that's where we're going to be at for level 40. And that means we can go access the Driftwood Shore shop, which we're going to do right now. And then uh, we will do Plenty Max. Probably not in this video, I'm probably gonna have to split this in two videos. 
I think I'm just gonna record it all out though and just see how long it ends up being. Probably could maybe just split it right here, so that could be a thing. This could just be my level 40 talk and paper jam talk, which is cool if that's the case. I felt like both those topics are really important and really necessary. I'm not going the right way at all. Oops!